there, it's Tom Graham from Avid Marketing. We're here at AS New York with Skip Leafse, who is the lead sound re-recording mixer on Gravity. Skip, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, nice to be here. So I have to say I'm a huge fan of the Skip Leafse mix approach. And uh, having seen all of your films of, of recent years, like True Grit and now Gravity, you, um, you're able to tell a story with sound and almost the lack of sound and not uh, some big explosions, if I can. Can you tell us a little bit about your approach with that? Well, those movies have that in common. You know, they both, uh, we, we really made a sincere effort to use a minimal approach. We, uh, really, no, uh, no Country for Old Men, we've tried to do, literally use as little units as possible. Uh, in many cases, we're only playing 10 or 15 sounds, including maybe one dialogue track or production track, one a uh, bit of Foley and a bunch of uh, sound effects. When Craig really used a lot of sounds, but he, he would say use a lot of effects to comprise one wind track, let's say. So we had a, we kind of experimented with that minimal approach. And Gravity, um, for its um, overall sound idea, was that it's in space. There's no sound. You can't hear it. Uh, Whatever is going on, um, there's no air to transmit the audio. So um, we came up, they, it was actually Alfonso and Glenn and the sound designer, uh, Glenn Fremantle and Neva Derry. They had this idea that if it was happening in your suit, you could hear that like a gassy sound, or if you touch something, the sound would be transmitted through your suit to your, to your so you could hear transmitted sounds. So that was our little cheat. So things that were, if you, like if the ship was disintegrating and you were touching it, you could hear that rumble. Or if you, you were hanging onto something and it blew up, you could feel that through your suit. So it also had kind of a minimal approach, except for we had a gigantic uh, ton of fantastic music to work with. And the music kind of filled in for what we would normally do with a big sort of zoomy sound job. And the music wasn't minimal at all. Uh, it, and it had no boundaries. Uh, actually, it's just flying all over the place. So. That was, um, well, that wasn't very minimal at all. Tell us a little bit about the mix of Gravity. We know that you're a Pro Tools in-the-box mixer. Tell us about the interaction with Pro Tools and, and your approach on the film. Well, we wanted to go, from the beginning, we knew we wanted it to be virtual because we had to work very quickly. We had, uh, the director always wants to address the broadest range of possibilities. He wants to try everything. So we needed to be virtual and fast. We need to be able to do sophisticated work really quickly. Uh, we need to be able to save that and record that in automation. We have great automation as we do in Pro Tools. And of course, that's my home platform. So I, I couldn't feel happier and safer. Awesome. Now, really exciting Atmos mix as well. So you were able to do the original mix and then easily transition to Atmos, right? Well, the Atmos uh, system really wasn't happening then. Uh, this was last October, we're talking about a year ago. Basically, um, at that point, Brave had experimented with it. I guess they did about around 25% of the movie in Atmos. Uh, and a few other movies had experimented with a post-Atmos version where they did the regular version first and then made the other version. And we agreed to basically, we didn't really have enough time, so we said, let's just put a pin in it. Um, the mix, uh, we knew that we had enough time because the film wasn't going to be released until this year, October, now, a year later. Yeah. So we uh, put our uh, sessions away, waited for the Atmos uh, plugins to get refined, and we then were able to offline make our mix conform to the Atmos system. And then we got all back to, together over at Warner Brothers in Burbank. Uh, the original mix was done at Delane Lee in, in London. So we took all of our offline work, we got together on the Atmos Stage 10 at, at Burbank, and we were able to take, the majority of our work was already running in the Atmos system, and we just went farther. We actually made a, it's quite different, the Atmos mix than the 7-1 mix. And um, it, we had such a great time. It being virtual, there were, we never had issues, we never had like, oh crap, we can't do that, oh that's married, we had everything virtual, Everything available to pan and have fun with. It was really great fun. No, it was great. And and I have to ask you, because I'm a huge fan of the, the Futz dialogue helping to tell the story. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about your approach and the techniques of the dialogue. 
I had talked to uh, the director about the, the, the problem of wanting to be authentic and have radio transmission sounds and using a futz, and, but also how that cuts into the, the character. You know, you, you, into the emotion of the dialogue. You lose emotion, and, and you want to be able to drive that whenever you feel like it, whenever it's convenient for the storytelling, you want to be able to go there. So what I used was uh, EQ3 with a 7 band, and I just used a simple you know, band limit, and um, that way I could, I could open it up or close it down for a syllable for a word. It could be totally flexible, very easy to automate, very easy to save. And Alfonso was very comfortable with that idea. He loved being able to say, no, come on, make, make it a little more. I need a little more. Come on, let's go. So I, it's kind of a, um, it's very elegant, but also it's not sophisticated. It's very simple. And I guess that's my style. If you had to say I was had a mixing style, it would be, I hope, elegant and not sophisticated. I, I would definitely agree that the results are there. And, uh, and again, I'm a big fan of your approach to uh, less is more for sound in supporting the storytelling. I think gravity, I, I, I don't know if you saw my post on the user conference, but I said uh, I'm predicting Academy Award nominations and, uh, and more. So oh, well, don't get carried away. All right, but it's fantastic. And thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's my All pleasure. Right. Great.